Good day, my name is Ed Sparks. I'm the Chief Engineer of Bridges Design and Construction for CSX Transportation based out of Jacksonville, Florida. Happy to present to you today on some emerging challenges and solutions in railroad infrastructure, specifically from a CSX perspective. So it wouldn't be a railroad presentation without uh, some discussion of uh, safety. A couple points real quick on personal and track safety. Just some statistical comparison between uh, the large railroads in the U.S. Statistics are a few months lagging, but that's the latest we have. The comparison and just shows the rate per 200,000 man hours of injuries. For those new to the industry or not familiar with this, these are record setting numbers and they are for all carriers. The railroad industry has been year over year improving in, in personal safety which is a never-ending task and one that we take very seriously. Just as serious is our uh, focus on trying to eliminate track cause to derailments. Derailments of all cases, but since I'm in the engineering department in particular, track cause is one of our focuses. And as you can see here from these statistics, year over year, significant improvements, the left chart being a main track derailments and the uh, right chart being all uh, that are attributed to track causes and tremendous improvement year over year. In fact, uh, 2021, that was a record for our 196 or so year history in the railroad business. It's just one across our network. So tremendous amount of effort and investment and dedication goes into performance like that. We'll talk about the technology here in a second that also aids greatly. So some developments in the railroad industry. Right off the bat here, as of late, public funding opportunities for railroad projects has markedly increased. In New England, which were a relatively new entrant into with our acquisition of the Pan Am Railways, our predecessor there, Pan Am, was actually uh, quite good in part partnering with governmental agencies to achieve mutually beneficial outcomes. We will obviously continue that effort for the benefit of all uh, parties there. As of late, there's been a substantial uptick in those opportunities. One thing to note is that those projects share the same resources as our ongoing internal historic investments. So the equipment, manpower, things of that nature, materials, those certainly are strained by this added activity, but it's a good problem to have and we're working through it. Uh, technology development, adoption, and generation of value. We are seeing all types of things. The railroad industry may not be thought of as a leading edge technology industry, but we do implement quite a bit of technology and uh, hopefully I can provide some insights in addition to the other speakers of this fine uh, program. So as with all, it's opportunities for growth and improvement that we're after and many opportunities exist. So some solutions to these challenges. Right off the bat, I mentioned public partnerships. The federal government in particular has a very robust grant program program that traditionally CSX has not been a very active uh, participant in some of these programs, but the funding is sizable as can be seen by the figures there on the screen. That's a graphic taken from a Department of Transportation presentation, but we do have several public-private partnership projects that are ongoing as we speak, and you'll see some evidence of those here shortly. Right off the bat, we have a uh, and I apologize for the eye test here on, on the diagram, but it just gives some indication of the number of projects in Northern Virginia, between Washington, D.C. and Richmond, Virginia. We have an active, very robust program with the Commonwealth of Virginia to greatly expand passenger service while maintaining, or in some cases, slightly improving freight service as well through the Commonwealth. It's a very large program that is state funded. Howard Street Tunnel, this is one, if you read the Railroad Trade Magazines, it's been a, a project long on the wish list of CSX. It opens up one of the last pre-Pan Am clearance obstructions on our network uh, along our Interstate 95 corridor, if you will, between Baltimore and Philadelphia. This is, again, a public-private partnership. We are funding a substantial portion of it, as are the states of Maryland, the federal government, and the Port of Baltimore, to improve clearances on a multitude of bridges and tunnels, one directly under downtown Baltimore, which is extremely challenging. These are some of the additional projects just to show how they're spread out and how they're going. There's opportunities here for the contracting community, as well as engineering firms to assist us in this effort. Another long-standing project is the CREATE project in Chicago. It's just up there yesterday and uh, observing the construction. I'll have an aerial photo here in a second, but this is a substantial public-private partnership with all the constituent railroads in Chicago, the City of Chicago, Department of Transportation, Illinois Department of Transportation, and Federal Highway Administration to unclog the busiest freight
great terminal in North America, possibly the world. This particular project shows grade separating the double track main from two other double track mains and the associated connections. That work is underway and that's how it looked as of Wednesday of this week. So a lot of work going on relocating the existing mains on a temporary alignment and removing the existing main tracks, building retaining walls, earth and fill, and new bridges to carry the double track railroad over the other railroads, which will allow for an expansion of commuter service, an expansion of freight service, and greatly reduces an area of gridlock in one of our key areas. So as aforementioned, Pan Am Railways. Last summer, CSX acquired Pan Am Railways, which is an exciting extension of our network from the Worcester, Massachusetts area up through New Hampshire and Maine, opening up new markets to our network, which covers every state east of the Mississippi and two Canadian provinces. So exciting times there. But that brings with it a lot of opportunities. We are investing a lot of our money. The photos you'll see there side by side are a before and after of one of the yard leads in Portland, Maine, and completely rebuilding the yard leads and many of the tracks in the yard, improving the efficiency of the operation, improving the speed of the operation in an attempt to improve customer service and try to win business away from the highways and grow our rail traffic in New England. As mentioned earlier on, the Pan Am was very good at partnering with Maine DOT and some of the other uh, public agencies in the area to partner for improvements. In the interest of time, we'll read all the all the statistics and so forth on these projects, but just suffice to say, there's a lot of work that has been planned, a lot of work going on in a couple short years, the marked improvement in transit times, speed to market, and so forth should be realized in New England. With that, we have to integrate the dispatch systems, uh, which are vastly different from the rest of the CSX network. Tremendous amount of effort is being employed to integrate those. And just as it would be with air traffic control systems and other critical systems, the signaling and dispatching is an essential part of our operation. And a lot of technology goes into ensuring the safe operation of trains. That work is well underway. And again, targeted to be complete by the end of this year. Passenger service in the Northeast. The Down Easter service, a uh, longstanding program uh, to provide passenger service to several major communities and cities in New England. There are many upgrades to the signal system planned, as you can see here on the screen, between Brunswick and Haverhill. That work is underway. Elsewhere on the network, not necessarily in New England, we have a continuing program to extend our passing sightings in single track territory, of which the majority of the railroad is. We are running with the aid of uh, distributed power technology, longer and longer trains in order to move more freight between origin and destination with fewer resources to be more efficient, more fuel efficient. In order to do that, we need longer passing sightings. Those projects are ongoing. There's always several underway, and uh, that's an example of one of them there on the screen. This is an interesting project just completed between Christmas and New Year's of last year. Between our permit approval and the first train running on this track, it was a connection track between two lines, it took 14 days, an extremely aggressive project. Uh, we partnered with our con contracting partners along with our company forces to build and put in service a new connection that opened up fluidity on our network. This happens to be in Southeast Georgia. The railroad industry is very dynamic and aggressive to improve organization uh, when the opportunity is there. And that's a good example of it. And that provided fluidity and efficiency benefits to our operation, reducing delay on a very important corridor in, in Georgia for us. We continue to do bridge modernizations, a uh, combination of company forces and contractor forces. We use utilize external engineering services to aid our bridge design teams internally. And we fabricate some of our bridge spans in-house as well, which is a little bit unique to CSX. This is an example of a timber trestle being replaced by steel and concrete bridge in outside of Atlanta, Georgia. This is a capacity improvement as far as the load rating capacity, also a rideability, ride quality improvement for our train crews here. We partner with equipment suppliers. Uh, it's maybe hard to see on this photo, but this was a substantial deck replacement in North Georgia with company forces using the locomotive uh, railbound crane is in the middle of the bridge and excavators and so forth. And then a rental crane, large rental crane, the white and red crane to assist. Again, very challenging projects. The logistics and constructability of these are challenges 
challenges that my internal team here has to uh, tackle and overcome on a weekly basis. Intermodal, we have, through the logistics problems, especially through the pandemic, the surges of container traffic and difficulty with adequate dredge and truck driving resources and so forth necessitated the expansion and development of container yards to provide surge capacity at our intermodal terminals. This is one, a new container yard in Chicago that took a, or frankly, an industrial brownfield site and turned it into usable space and made it a productive part adjacent to one of our very busy terminals, as you can see there on the left. That activity has gone on, not just on CSX, but uh, all large railroads across North America to meet the needs of our customers. There are commercial projects that are announced monthly. Um, some examples, uh, Ford Lightning, uh, the electric vehicle plan is being uh, constructed east of Memphis, Tennessee on CSX routes. The Rivian plant, electric truck company east of Atlanta. We've got an inland port, which is an intermodal facility that the Port of Mobile, Alabama is building and around Montgomery, Alabama, that will allow the reach of the ports to further inland. So exciting times in the market. So equipment and technology development is probably something that the, the audience here is most interested in. And there's quite a few things, but one of the more exciting developments is a train inspection portal. And what this is, it's built over top of our main line and is a series of very high powered lights, high definition cameras, high speed cameras, and and machine learning and such that a train traveling through this portal at 60 miles an hour is essentially at a very high speed photographed. And uh, those photographs are stitched together and through technology looking for defects in the cars, components that are missing, cracked, broken, out of place, et cetera. And these are stationed around one of our major uh, terminal facilities so that when the train arrives, no additional inspection is needed. The crews go to work fixing the problems that have already been found through this portal. A real step forward in reducing the delay and identifying uh, with precision defects for quick remediation. Drone track inspection. Drones have been a popular topic now for going on a decade, but the technology is still maturing. One area that we are very interested in is in our hump yards, which are very busy facilities. We have five of them across our network currently. Inspecting the track in those locations is a, a challenge. The, the yards are always busy. You need to have clear tracks in order to do a proper inspection. And that inspection is typically walking. But what if you had a drone that could, as soon as the track is clear, the computer system would notify the drone and the drone would automatically depart from its docking station, fly over at a low altitude and inspect the track looking for broken rails, missing bolts, misaligned tracks, gauge widening, things of that nature, tie conditions. We're not quite there yet. We're working on developing that technology, but once it becomes, and it will uh, come to fruition once it does, that it will be a big step forward so that our, our workforces can be repairing the defects that are found utilizing this technology and can do so in a much safer and more timely manner. Autonomous track assessment car. These cars, and you may see them on some of our trains running some of our major routes, typically right behind the locomotives as seen on, on the bottom photo, is a weighted box car. It has concrete in the bottom of it, and it's equipped with several bits of automation track inspection technology. It measures under load at speed how the tracks are holding up and relays that information through uh, communication systems to our back office technology that distills out the defects, notifies our supervisors, and then we can dispatch people to see, to verify, and to fix those defects found. This is a large step forward in that our traditional geometry cars, which look like passenger trains, which we still have, test our network two, maybe three times per year. These test key corridors one or two times a week. So a substantial substantial improvement in the frequency of tests. Another encouraging technology that is not ready for prime time yet, but shows promise, and especially in areas in New England that have some restrictions with regard to uh, herbicide placement. This is a directed energy system that uh, we're working with a supplier to develop that kills vegetation with a specifically modulated electric application we hope this will be ready for prime time soon because uh, their vegetation control is an ongoing challenge on the railroads as well as other transportation modes, but railroads specifically and alternative methods are certainly welcome. So real quick, uh, we started with safety, we'll end with safety and crossing safety is a big deal on the railroad. First off, we'll start with overhead crossings. So modern railroading across North America is cleared for double stack containers. As I mentioned earlier, we have a big project between Baltimore and Philadelphia.
Philadelphia, a public-private partnership, to clear that corridor. And that's the last of the corridors, mainline corridors on CSX that uh, has yet to be cleared for double stack clearance. Now on the Pan Am property, which we recently acquired, we have 172 obstructions on the main line alone between Worcester, Massachusetts and Mattawamkeg, Maine at the far northeast end. That photo you see there just for illustration is what happens when a container is misloaded and strikes an overhead structure. And uh, we very much want to avoid that. But as you can see on the right-hand side, the diagram from the scanning that we have performed across the entire former Pan Am network, um, the black line that intersects the outline of the rail cars uh, is the existing clearance, which is substantially below what is needed for modern rail traffic. So across uh, New England, we have a lot of work to do in cooperation with our DOT partners and trying to modernize the clearances, improve the speeds, and improve the safety of the operation. And uh, we're certainly looking forward to working with our partners in making that happen. Now, the other part of uh, crossing safety is is the at-grade crossings. And I uh, have a little video clip here uh, when it loads that will show one of the reasons why we are aggressively wanting to eliminate at-grade crossings. Now, from that video, first of all, uh, fortunately, no one was hurt or killed, but collisions like that do happen on a daily basis across our network. So while in your community, you may never, have never heard of that before, across the network, just on our railroad alone, and CSX is not unique, this happens on all large railroads, all railroads, as a matter of fact, there are interactions between trains and vehicles and unfortunately people, and they never end well. And so we are actively working with the communities with which we operate to reduce road crossings, to eliminate these wherever we can, and uh, for the betterment of the traveling public, Public and for the betterment of our train crews that are in the head end of these locomotives. And as you all know, there is no steering wheel. The train crew cannot avoid, they cannot turn out of the way. All they can do is apply the brakes and sound the horn. And you saw and possibly heard that in the clip that I just gave. So lots of work to do. Again, that, that is something in New England that we're looking to aggressively pursue to improve the safety for the traveling public and for our employees as we coexist together providing interstate commerce. And with that, I hope some of this provided value. I appreciate everybody's attention. And if there's an opportunity for questions later, be happy to answer them. Thank you very much.